In this video, we're gonna tear this thing apart. I've always kind of been intimidated by ripping into one of these things. I've never done it before. Uh, it's not for the faint, of, faint at heart. What's up guys, Sam Spade back with another video. So uh, I've been gaming on my 2012 iMac for a little while and ran into a, a few snags. This system is just too old. Um, you can't upgrade the graphics card in it. And this model was only running a 512 megabytes uh, on the graphics card. Uh, and so that's why I bought this one. It's a 2013 iMac and it was the top of the line at the time. It had a four gigs graphics card, uh, but this one actually had a fusion drive. And if you know anything about fusion drives, uh, they are notoriously bad and they fail. That's because you got an SSD, which is super lightning fast, constantly writing to a uh, old platter hard drive. If you have a fusion drive, you can actually split it, so you boot up from a thumb drive and you're installing like Monterey or Ventura, you can uh, open up terminal and in terminal, uh, you can actually separate the uh, fusion drive into two separate drives. So you're left with a 120 gigabyte SSD drive and a three terabyte storage drive. So, uh, so I was using it for storage and I have my OS on the 120. Three terabyte hard drive finally bit the dust. It, the screen itself is actually just placed on with double stick tape, believe it or not. And you can buy a kit online for like this one. I got this for like five bucks. So these are actually replacement stickers. They're very cool, it's like five bucks on eBay. It came with this little tool. Yeah. First thing you want to do is remove all your peripherals and don't forget the power cord. Next, take your tool and just fit it in between the screen edge. Go around the entire screen edge and make sure you get all the adhesive separated. Then go to the top and just pry it open just a little bit and then lay it down flat. Now lift the top of the monitor open and be careful because there are two connectors inside for the power and display. Once you have it open, peel off any extra adhesive. There are little tabs on the side that make this pretty easy. Once the adhesive's off, the screen just lifts right out. And this is the inside of the 2013 iMac. This is the hard drive. We're gonna replace it with an SSD. Go ahead and blow out any excess dust. Give it a good cleaning. This thing was pretty filthy. Now we wanna remove the screws that are holding in the speaker right next to the hard drive. Once the speaker's out, you just have to pull it out just slightly and move it to the side because there are two screws on the hard drive bracket that we need to access. Go ahead and remove those two screws very carefully. Once the screws are out, the hard drive just lifts right up. Go ahead and pull off the bracket and unplug the hard drive. Take the new SSD and it connects right up. Now take some uh, double stick tape or any adhesive you've got around. This one's nice because it's got a little thickness to it. and just stick it to the back of the iMac. Go ahead and reinstall the bracket in case anyone wants to use it later on. And reinstall the speaker. Next, we wanna go around the edge and clean up all the old adhesive that was holding the monitor in place. And then grab your new stickers once that's done 
and install them. With a steady hand and a keen eye, this should be no problem. Next, go ahead and place the monitor in place and reconnect the monitor cables. Now it's a good idea before you seal this iMac back up permanently, go ahead and tape down the screen and turn the system back on to properly test it before permanently adhering the screen back together. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, I finally got Ghost Spectre installed on this thing. Uh, it was a bit of a process, a lot of headaches. Uh, learned a lot of things about the 2013 iMac. Uh, the two systems are definitely not alike. This one has an uh, internal hard drive and a PCIe, and that does some funky things uh, with the OS's installation. So basically, Ghost Spectre overwrites the EFI so I can't boot directly back into Macintosh. Uh, however, I do have an OS on the PCIe, which still has OpenCore installed on it. But when I go to install OpenCore on the solid state drive, it, it won't overwrite the EFI, allowing me to dual boot. But I can still dual boot through the other OS. It's just kind of a, a headache and a workaround. But for now, the system works. Uh, all the hardware is functioning properly. So now we're gonna go ahead and take off the uh, adhesive back here and get this thing sealed up so that I can get back to work. Let's get into it. This process is pretty straightforward. Lift the bottom of the screen and peel those off first. And go ahead and stick it down. Use a microfiber cloth to apply some pressure. Then lift the rest of them and just peel off the stickers. And lay it down gently. Begin with the microfiber cloth and get a good adhesion all the way around. Well, there you go guys. The actual reinstallation of the monitor was quicker than I expected. Honestly, it was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Uh, kind of cool. I've built PCs in the past and this thing, it can be intimidating at first, but it's just like any other computer. You just got to tear into it. So I hope that this video helped you guys. Let me know uh, in the comments down below, uh, have you ever torn into one of these things? Uh, what was your experience with it? And uh, let me know what you think of this build, guys. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.